and welcome to Tea with Charlie. So this is Charlie who I will be interviewing today about their job and their career aspirations and whatnot. So uh, welcome Charlie to the show I guess I'll call it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks Sharon. Alright so what is your current job? Uh, I'm a sessional instructor at a university at the moment um, just teaching undergraduates about sex education and adolescent health. What did you do as your first job? My first job, wow, I think, I don't know whether it counts, but I did babysitting when I was in high school um, for my own siblings, because I have older siblings, and um, also for like neighbourhood kids and yeah. stuff like that. Did you do that for long? Or? Um, I did babysitting right up until I was in my early 20s, okay. um, so sometimes I would uh, babysit my sister's kids and... Um, that was part of like a room and board exchange thing we had okay. even while I had a full-time yeah. job. So, What were your work hours like? Or what are they like now, I guess? Uh, now they vary depending on how many contracts I take on at once because I'm a contract uh, employee. So uh, I work contracted at the moment nine hours a week facing time with my students. But that also includes a few hours of prep, a bunch of marking time, yeah. answering emails consistently. <laughs> um, so it ends up being a lot of hours. Um, but yeah, very varied depending on even just the class that I'm teaching mm. at the time. So yeah, it varies a lot, but anywhere between nine and maybe 25 hours a week. Okay. And do you get paid? I guess you get paid for the more uh, actual teaching all the face-to-face -face hours more than like marking and so on or do you also get um so we get paid face-to-face -face hours an hourly rate based on our face-to-face -face time yeah. um but that also includes a stipulation that some of that time is spent in preparation for your classes yeah um and then because it's quite a high amount and then for um marking we also get it, uh, extra hours um paid at a different rate I don't know if you're willing to talk about it, but I don't know if you're allowed, mm -hmm. uh, how much you generally earn or... Uh, it really depends on the contract uh, and what I'm contracted to do. Mm -hmm. So um, I get paid, what is the equivalent of about $40 an hour for marking and mm -hmm. for class time? Because every one hour of class time is seen as also including three hours of prep time. Yeah. So... Uh, <laughs> So I get paid quite a high rate hourly if you look at it as only the FaceTime hours, but there's quite a lot of hours that go in as yeah. well from that. So uh, it really depends um, on, based on how much work I have to do and, uh, and the contract I have at the time, but that's a rough estimate. So what do you like about your job? I love teaching. Um, I, that was not what I intended to do when I went into study. Um, it was something I sort of fell into. They were looking for... Um, sessional teaching staff at the university that I attend and um, because I'm a postgraduate at that university I could apply. So I applied and I've been doing it for over a year now and I absolutely adore it. Um, I love teaching young people and even some of them are older than me sometimes, <laughs> um, things about their own health a lot yeah. of the time that they didn't know and then also things about the world that they didn't necessarily know. Uh, and things about how to how to go out and teach our you know aspiring young people and, and adolescents and things how to teach them about their health. Um, I don't know. I just find that really rewarding. Yeah. Do you find they're willing to, I guess, learn and put in that effort to learn these things? I think ultimately the, a person's willingness to learn about anything is based on a number of factors that are outside of my <laughs> control. Things like the person that they are, um, the way they were raised, the culture they're from, all of these things. Um, how much they apply themselves, uh, what they want to learn, where they want to go in life, all of these things uh, that are outside my control. But I try to make the learning environment um, a really safe space for them to learn. And I try to be really welcoming for them to make mistakes and learn as they go. And I think that benefits them when it comes to learning because it enables them to uh, sort of have an idea about, you know, it's okay to make mistakes and sometimes that's the best place that we learn. And so they're often willing once they know that it's a safe space for them to learn yeah. to actually do that learning. 
um, I think I do as much as I possibly can to make that um, learning experience a positive one for them. And I think the more you can do that, the more willing students are to generally learn. Yeah, they can put their trust more into you and not be afraid to open up. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it, and it just enables them to think outside the box sometimes if you give them the space to. Mm-hmm. So I guess as an opposite to that, uh, what do you dislike about your job, if anything? The hours can be quite long at times. Mm -hmm. Um, I can get a frantic email from a student at midnight on a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. uh, And if I'm awake, you know, generally I'll respond to those emails because I know what it's like to be a frantic student that (laughs) needs some help. So I try to be as responsive as I can. uh, And it's just a difficulty for me putting that professional space in terms of, okay, this is when I have to switch off my my work life and actually have a personal life um because i am so supportive of my students and i try to be so supportive of my students um the hardest part for me or probably i guess i wouldn't call it the worst but the hardest part is is knowing when to say okay i'm not going to answer any more emails tonight i really do need to get some sleep and i need to go and take care of myself yeah Um, i think that's the hardest part definitely what is the worst experience you have ever had in your job I don't think I've had any really terrible experiences in my current job. Um, The university I work for is very supportive, um, they're really lovely, and I can always go to um, the people that are supervising my teaching uh, and talk to them about anything that comes up, and they're really supportive in that way. So I don't think I've had any really, really awful times during that job. There are times when I think, oh no, did I... Did I do that right? Did I grade that right? Mm. Probably the worst, the thing I hate the most in terms of moments during is when you have to give someone a grade that you know is going to fail them. Mm-hmm. I really hate that um, because I know that's distressing to yeah. have that happen and uh, I just find that's really difficult for me. But sometimes you, you don't have an option and you have to do that because yeah. um, you've tried sort of everything else at that point. So I think that's probably, you know, there's been a few moments where I've had to do that and that's difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, that's probably the most difficult thing. So um, I guess what is the worst experience you've had in other jobs? I won't mention which job it was, but I've experienced workplace bullying in a couple of places Mm -hmm. that I've worked. I found that really difficult to deal with at the time I was quite young. Um, And I think sometimes when you are young, people tend to take advantage of your um you not being sure about what's appropriate and what's not in a workplace and sometimes um you end up in situations where you are being bullied or harassed by the people in your workplace and i think that was the most difficult time and it came at a very difficult time in my life so that was really hard um i'm much more aware of that now i'm much um, stronger in my boundaries and convictions when it comes to the treatment that I'll accept from a job. Yeah. But I think that's something for young people who are going into jobs for the first time to really keep in mind is there is a level to which you should be treated and everyone should be treated. And yeah. uh, if you're not being treated that way, you should try and get some help. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, so I think that was probably the worst time. What was the best experience you've had in this job so far? Wow, it's hard to pinpoint one, but I love when a student says to me something like, you know what, I never looked at this this way before, I never understood this in this way before and, you know, coming into this class has taught me a lot and I feel more confident going and teaching this to young people and all of that sort of stuff. Um, those sort of moments are really what make the job for me and yeah. what makes it so enjoyable is when someone, you know, a student comes to you and says, look, I really enjoyed this class and, and you know, I learnt a lot. That, that's what you want, that's yeah. the end goal. So when someone tells you that that's happened for them, that's, that's really great. Do you have a best experience in another job in particular? Or? Hmm. Um, yeah, I used to work in a clothing store um, and I loved working there. I had really great co-workers that I really enjoyed working with and just spending time with them, you know, sort of day to day, but also it was a, a clothing store for plus size women mm-hmm. and I just loved helping women find outfits that made them feel beautiful and there's a few instances I can kind of remember where it was someone who felt really down about themselves and I helped them find an outfit that made them feel really good about themselves 
and it was you know um, a big moment for them because they were not someone who was confident wearing maybe that kind of outfit before or anything like that uh, and that always made me really happy when I was working in that job if I could help someone who wasn't confident feel confident in their skin that always yeah. makes me feel really good. It'd be nice because I know a lot of uh, especially stores and shopping centres don't really cater to over a certain size mm -hmm. like there's a lot that you just can't even get over like size 14 or 12 mm -hmm. yet alone um, well some stores that I know the one you worked at was I think 14 to 26 14 to 26 yeah, yeah. so um, it had a lot wider range mm -hmm. yeah yeah so it was always great when you could help somebody who yeah, didn't necessarily feel great about shopping for clothes, enjoy an experience. Mm -hmm. I guess we already found out pretty much that you assume you enjoy your job right now. <laughs> I love my job right now. I, um, sadly it is contract work, so it comes and it goes, but uh, I hope to be teaching long into the future and um, I want to go and do a tertiary, graduate certificate in tertiary teaching. Yes. Um, after I finish my master's, hopefully this year, um, <laughs> so that I can supplement that and, and uh, get more work teaching because, I don't know, I just found a passion for it and I really love mm. it. So, What do you want to do as your ideal job, assume it will be obviously in this industry? So I'd like to be a unit convener, which is um, someone who decides on the topics that are covered, they help um, decide upon a curriculum, uh, and all of that kind of stuff and also when you're tied to a university in that way where you're a full-time sort of employee mm. you get to do research as well uh, so I'd love to be teaching more around psychology which is where I've done most of my learning uh, and I'd love to be uh, and continue with sex education and those mm. sorts of things but I'd also love to be doing research into LGBTQIA plus um, needs and areas uh, as part of my work. For those that want to get into something like what you're doing or want to do, what do they have to study and what qualifications do they need? To be a tertiary educator, you really only need to have an undergraduate and be doing a postgraduate. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have to find a university that's looking for sessional instructors uh, and some places will take you on and some won't. You're more likely to get picked up if you have a graduate certificate in teaching and on top of your master's degree as well mm -hmm. uh, or if you're if you have a doctorate or your um, research is particularly appealing to a university that kind of thing but if you can get your foot in the door somewhere the more experience you have the more likely you are to be picked up so yeah uh, that's the other thing if you're particularly interested in psychology like I am you need an undergraduate in psychology with honours um, top class honours, either A plus or B plus honours, okay. and then a master's degree okay, yeah. to practice in psychology. And how long does that roughly take all up in this? Um, so to get general registration, it takes six years uh, if you don't have any breaks in between. How long have you wanted to do uh, psychology and, and this sort of field you're going down of maybe tertiary education? Uh, so when I was in my teen years, my two sort of avenues that I was really interested in was psychology and teaching. Mm. Uh, when I was younger, I tried to get to university for teaching. Um, I was I was thinking of teaching uh, adolescence, so uh, high school. Okay. Um, that didn't go very well, and it took a little while for me to find my way back into some psychology because I honestly didn't think I was smart enough okay. uh, to do psychology. Um, it turns out that. You know, intelligence isn't, intelligence isn't the main thing when it comes to university. It comes with drive and ambition and things like that. Uh, so after a while, uh, I took some TAFE classes around that sort of area. And then eventually I got into um, undergraduate psychological sciences degree, did my honours, and then now I'm doing my master's degree at the moment. So it's been a long time, probably the last... Mm, 18 years maybe it was a very early ambition in mm -hmm. my in my teenage years or my childhood to to do teaching and to do um psychology because i've always been really fascinated by why some people do some things and some people do other things 
uh, when you know presented with the same choice that's always been mm-hmm. a real fascination for me so uh, yeah probably that long um, but it took me quite a while to to actually give myself the benefit of the doubt and think that yeah. I could do it so so I guess that kind of leads into my next question of why do you want to do it I guess it's that interest in why people uh, act the way they do and um, is there anything else in particular or my drives for why I want to be a psychologist change so much Mm. Um, I started out I had a real interest in clinical psychology um, because I thought that that held the answers to why people do the things that they do and I think that that particular question has been a very strong driver for me but I think my the place where I think the answers come from has changed a lot over Mm. time so now I'm actually studying community psychology it's a very small school of psychology um but it is a dedicated school in, in Australia. You can get certified to be a community psychologist. Okay. Um, and that basically looks at decolonialization, femi- um, feminism, uh, social justice, liberation psychology, critical psychology, and it takes parts of all of those things and weaves them together um, to get a broader understanding of our environment and the way that it shapes the per- people that we become and the way it shapes communities of people. Um, and I think I found as time went on that that made so much more sense to me as to where the answers came from. And so that's my drive shifted then. Mm. So I still wanted to do psychology. I still had that burning question, but the place that I thought the answers came from really changed over time and so as that changed I followed that sort of feeling and and yeah went into community psychology and I love community psychology Um, queer theory is a big thing that comes up in community psychology which really you know tracks into everything I'm interested in so um, I love it and I hope to be doing it for many more years all right so the last thing is is there anything you want to say to those that are looking to get into psychology or uh, teaching or yeah, your area of expertise? Um, I would say if you have the ambition and the drive to do it, you definitely can. Don't discount yourself because you think you're not smart enough. There's always people that can help you. There's always tutors you can go to. Uh, psychologists are generally pretty cool people and they like to help students get along if you're interested in teaching uh, do the same thing and just keep track of where you think that the answers are coming from and all of that sort of stuff because ultimately your drives are going to be intrinsically your own uh, and if you follow those drives you tend to have much more ambition and drive to finish so um, that's what I would say I think if you have the drive if you have the ambition and you know where it's coming from you have that self-awareness you can do it go out give it a go uh we can always use more psychologists in the world <laughs> so, and more teachers okay so thank you for coming on and thank you for sharing your wisdom with the followers and viewers on this channel and yeah just thank you so much for being with us today thanks Sharon. it's been lovely and that is it for today and tea with charlie all right bye guys